Enemies are better now. Last time, the player got a full combat overhaul in terms of abilities, actions, and what they can do. Enemies needed some upgrades as well. Players can jump, dash, do combos, charge up attacks for bigger effects, and enemies, on the other hand, could do very little. They were boring, unmemorable, unremarkable, and really, I also created a lot of problems with how I had set up enemies to begin with. With that aside, like with the player combat video, I'm going to start with how enemies were and the stuff I didn't really like about them, and then go into the changes that make them better, along with some new features, because who doesn't like new features? I'm pretty excited, I want my enemies to be worth remembering, and I want them to feel like they're actually part of the game world, and I just want them to be, you know, good. Um, but, you know, I know exactly what to start with, and it's the biggest change to enemies, and probably the most important one. My AI wasn't enough. My enemy AI worked okay, but it just didn't feel right for this type of game or something. I had created some base enemy AI scripts, and the idea was that I would only need those base scripts to cover all of the enemy types in the game. I thought about it and figured, hey, you know, ranged attackers like archers, mages, or in this case, fairies and raccoons, that are ranged attackers all kind of do the same thing and behave the same way, so I could just use one AI script for ranged AI and put it on them. And then why stop there? I could do the same thing for melee attackers with the fighter AI, and then have covered like a huge chunk of the enemies in the game with two AI scripts. And of course, there's bosses, so I would have to do some custom scripts for them, but that's not too bad, right? And then, over time, I thought, you know, these enemies are a little bit similar, and I want the fairy to be a little different from the raccoon. And so I have to create a new ranged AI script to attach to the fairies, and you can already see where this is going, because then I have a bunch of melee attackers who are all very too samey, so I need some variation in that. And because I set this up with full scripts, I had to then create a new fighter script, and already for five enemies, I have five separate scripts, and that completely, completely went against the entire idea I was going with, where I would have very few amount of AI scripts to do a lot of work. Now every enemy was getting its own script, and it was taking a lot of time, and it really slowed down the entire process, and I quickly found myself very aware that I had made a horrible decision and needed to change something. And even then, enemies weren't great. Enemies were a little too basic in operation, and for instance, melee enemies, when they saw the player, would then immediately run at the player, trying to attack every frame until they could attack, and then they would launch into their attacks so fast, some of them would come out in one-tenth of a second, making it impossible really to react to it. And even though I have blocking mechanics, there's no way to expect people to throw a block out in less than a tenth of a second. And enemies were way too aggressive, really unfair. It was broken, and it definitely was not fun. Now on to the good stuff. Okay, so maybe I didn't do things the best way. I think in some cases how I set up enemies would have worked just fine in a different project, but as this project is growing and developing, I really feel like what I had set up just wasn't enough to kind of meet the bar that I wanted to reach. Changing enemy behavior, though, was first on the list to address, and that was solved by something I feel a lot of people are familiar with. Finite state machines. State machines! They're great, really. I didn't use them before, though, because for the longest time they seem really overly complex and complicated, and I made the assumption that it was too much for my game. Or, by assumption, I mean excuse. Every time I tried to learn them, I kept stumbling on different ways that made them more complicated and really, really hard to understand for me. But I kept coming back to this concept again and again because I knew it was the right direction to go. But it wasn't until I stumbled onto a video by Bitlytic that I'm going to link somewhere that things really started to connect with me. And so that worked out really well. And I'm very excited that I finally have a grasp of how to use state machines in a good way. Before I get too far, though, uh, in case some people aren't familiar with this, a finite state machine in this sense is used to manage a collection of individual behaviors, or states, 
for an entity, and then it kind of allows shifting from one state to another based on environmental factors or what's happening around it or even what the enemy itself is doing. It's just a really good way of breaking the AI pieces out into different segments and then managing the segments rather than trying to do everything in one uh, one script like I was doing that didn't didn't go super great. I won't go too far into the details, but using individual states solved a lot of the issues I was having. If I have multiple melee-focused emmies and I want to create variations of the idle state, I no longer have to rewrite the entire AI script, but I can now create a new idle class and swap that in. Also, by breaking down enemy behaviors into individual states, I was able to take more control over the finer details of enemy behavior. And really, because I had to break things down into individual states, I was able to more clearly see what those states should be and how an enemy should behave. Here's our mushroom friend from before. And here's the AI that I assigned it when I was doing AI with one individual thing at a time. This mushroom would see the player, charge at the player, try to launch an attack every frame until it could, and then once the attack was launched, it would then immediately continue following the player. This created a lot of issues and not a lot of room for, you know, doing anything different. So let's look at things how they are now with the new setup. The enemy first begins with the idle state, where it does whatever wandering or patrolling or hanging out that it does until it has a target. It then moves into the enemy follow state, where it will then follow the target until it gets close enough to enter the enemy wait status, where for a small amount of time the enemy will stand outside of attack range, carefully waiting for the right opportunity. At that moment I then do enemy engage. This is where the mushroom warrior in this case will then move into actual striking range. But that's not where this ends either, because now we go into an enemy charge stance. This is where the enemy will kind of choreograph the attack they're going to do, or charge up for a stronger attack. And then finally, after that, they unleash their attack in the enemy attack state. From there, if the target is still alive, it shifts back into enemy follow and will continue through that loop again. And if the target's dead, it just goes back into idle until it has another target. It's pretty simple, and but that is six different states for one enemy, and is that too many? I don't know. This feels good. It feels a lot more like a real game now when I'm fighting the enemies, and honestly, that's what matters. Also, it can reuse these individual states and other monsters, which is really great, mixing and matching appropriate states, you know, to create overall good, different variety of behaviors. So checking out this guy right here, we have basically the same setup. Uh, the only difference is it has a different follow state than the mushroom. It actually tries to keep a distance from the player a little bit further. And I believe on the enemy engage state, it's actually a little different with this too, because it doesn't go up into point blank range for striking. It kind of tries to run away and shoot from a distance. And I really like that. And that's not all. I have this enemy here that looks kind of like a thumb. It's actually a rock with a shark fin and it, I kind of wish I drew it better. It doesn't look as good in the game. Uh, it's a burrowing enemy, and it uses basically the same setup as the flying seed in the middle, except I've given it this enemy transform state. Uh, this rock will actually go underground and travel around underground where it's invincible, and then rise back up to fire a projectile and go underground again. But at the same time now, if you see all of these enemies here, they do actually seem like they're being very different in the game, but most of these states they're using are exactly the same, and I can get around now with doing very little code changes to make enemies a lot more different, be a lot more creative, create a lot more complex enemy behavior decisions, and it's really cool, and I'm really glad I finally figured out how to do state machines a good right way because I really feel like I opened a door in terms of like what I can do and I can finally make enemies operate a little bit more how I imagine them to. And the best part about this is if I make a mistake in something, I can just edit the state that has the mistake and not have to like redo an entire AI class. So very excited. I don't know if anyone else finds this interesting, but this is kind of one of those things that I was super excited about, so everyone has to hear about it. There's also other cool stuff. One of the cool things that really came from this is I realized that when enemies charge their attacks, I don't necessarily always want them to have the same charging particle effect that the player has. They can, though, but I also made it possible for each enemy to have a custom charge effect, and... I really want to have fun with that and be a little creative, but I still want, you know, the charge attacks to be recognized as charge attacks, but being able to give them different variations of what that particle effect can look like, whether it mimics the player's white balls, 
that I should probably call that something else, or if it's something else like a collection of leaves or some sort of like energy gathering, uh, I think I can really make another step towards making the enemies feel a little more unique and colorful. Enemy spawning. With the player being able to use combos and charge attacks, I felt it necessary to beef up the hit points on enemies. This led to the idea that perhaps having every enemy on screen at once might become overwhelming, especially if some enemies take a little bit longer to defeat in combat. Enemies now can spawn in waves. I'm not sure what the conditions will be exactly, but I've added in the ability for some enemies to be held back and only spawn in when there are less enemies on the field. What I'm most excited about this is that I have a reason to use custom spawning in animations. When you encounter enemies in the game, they will enter the room from various styles that suit the enemy. For instance, you can be in a cave and slimes may fall down from the ceiling, or perhaps a ground will open up for enemies to leap out of, or things can leap out of water or fly in. It's, again, the little things that I'm super excited for. These are the things that help give character and that organic feel to enemies, making their appearance a bit more memorable. Because I really want the enemies I make in the game to actually be cool and not just there. Next up will likely be the game's intro area for the next devlog. I have most of the mechanics made for the intro area, and I've been working on that for a while now. Um, that was actually going to be this devlog, but as it turns out, there was a lot more to building the intro area than I was hoping for, including the creation of the game's quest system and some like pseudo cutscene-like stuff that I was putting together. And it was it was taking a while. And if I did the devlog on that earlier, it just looked sad. So um, that's coming up soon. I'm excited to show that off when it gets just a little bit more polish on it. And uh, yeah, so thank you, everybody. You are all the very best. And I will see you in the next one.